Welcome to the It Was a Thing on TV podcast, episode 15, submission 527, Flying High. Flying High aired on CBS from August 28th of 1978 to January 23rd of 1979 for a total of 18 episodes, three of which were unaired. Welcome back. Mike is here again. And as always, I have Chico and Greg. And we're sort of continuing what we talked about earlier in the week with Super Train. We talked about Super Train, which is obviously a train. We had the Love Boat, which is a boat. Now we're going to go Airborne. Flying High was kind of sort of an equivalent, albeit not necessarily an equivalent, to those two shows and it took place in the air. So the uh, the main theme of the show was it followed three stewardesses. And they were played by Connie Selica, a young Connie Selica at that. Yeah, and, Connie Selica was 23 on this series. Yeah, she, she was almost a kid at that point. Pat Klaus, no relation. And Catherine Witt. And the captain of the plane was Howard Platt, who played Hoppy, Officer Hopkins, on Sanford and Son previously. And he was the partner of, if you don't remember, Smitty, who was played by Hal Williams, who later went on to be Marla Gibbs' husband on 227. And something very interesting about this. Ooh, I like interesting. Well, it's it could be scandalous if you think about it in some ways, but... Howard Platt, when he was on the show, he was dating or had a romantic relationship with Connie Selica. The big thing is, as Greg said, Connie Selica was 23 and Howard Platt was 40. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody either likes him really young or somebody likes him really old. <laughs> but yeah, they had a, a little... Uh, relationship which uh, led to an engagement. They ne- never got married, but it did lead to an engagement at some point. Uh, and also, Tanya Roberts was supposed to be in the cast, but was ultimately dropped. Now, it seems like Super Train, another parallel that has a Super Train, is it also had life as a TV movie before it became a series. And the TV movie got amazing ratings, or, or really good ratings. So CBS decided, you know what, we're going to turn this into a TV show. And I'm guessing that CBS, just like NBC, more or less, was capitalizing on the love boat trend. Oh, here's a funny sort of super transportation or transportation. Let's make a series of, of it. And yeah, in case you didn't notice, CBS had flying high on a plane. And NBC had super train on a train. And ABC had the love boat on a boat. So they all had their own separate type of transportation on a TV show in 78, 79. And only one of them would last uh, longer than 78, 79. The original, the love boat. Yeah. Uh, Interesting thing, though. uh, You look at the three particulars, Pat Klaus, Catherine Witt, and Connie Selica. Could very well also be sort of a sub-copycat of Charlie's Angels. 
which takes me to my next point. The show was a comedy, but really the ultimate draw to this show was the jiggle factor. Something you would have seen in Charlie's Angels and something you would have seen in Three's Company and just the over-sexualizing of TV back in the 70s, the the, the TNA. And it reminds me of uh, SNL back in the 70s. There was a fake promo for a Network of the Battle Stars type of event. And Battle called, of the Network TNAs? Battle of the Network TNAs. Absolutely oh, I right. I remember this. Yes. That was the first thing I was thinking of when I saw this, uh, the clips of this, and thought about the other shows that were like it. It's Battle of the Network TNAs on an airplane. Absolutely. So there you go. And actually, and as I said, the, the, the TV movie had great ratings to the point where they actually ordered the TV show. And it was a funny TV show. One review that I read actually said it's the funniest new TV show of 1978-79. How could this miss? This, this TV critic said it was the funniest new show of the season. Well... I so think that, what went I, wrong? I, well, I, yeah. I, I, I think it was the TNA factor that might have have cost it, and I'll tell you why. The time slot it aired in was 10 p.m. on Friday nights. How many comedies can you think of that aired at 10 o'clock, strictly comedies, that aired at 10 o'clock on Friday nights? Uh, I can't. I, I, I've got one, and I know Greg's going to hate my response to this. You there, Greg? Yeah, well, let me guess. It's going to be Manimal. No, no, no. That Well, that was 9 o'clock, and that's not a comedy. What is it? The Jay Leno Show. Oh! oh. Well, I, again, it's it's a, a comedy of sorts. I know as much as we dislike Jay Leno in these parts. But... Jay Leno was the reason Gabrielle Union got fired from AGT. Bump him. Yeah, he's a racist. The following remarks do not represent my class or this podcast. Send all hate mail to Chico and Greg. But yeah, I mean, what, what comedies have aired, strictly comedies have aired at 10 o'clock at night? Not really any. I mean, you'd usually see comedies ending at 9.30. Yep. And even if you had comedies sort of in the vein of Moonlighting, they were sort of adult comedies which were sort of transitioning to the to the more mature type of programming you'd see at 10 o'clock. So I really think that's what killed it in the end was the 10 o'clock time slot. If you moved it and maybe had a little less jiggle and put it on at 9, maybe you would have had something. So jiggle is not a substitute for plot development. Yeah, they did have a very good lineup of guest stars, unlike Super Train. I got to give them a ton of credit there. Just going through the episodes, let me tell you the, the guest stars on each episode. On the pilot, the two hour uh, movie, you had Marsha Wallace. Hey, Marsha Wallace would have uh, ended uh, Bob Newhart not too long before. Mm-hmm. So, so, I mean, she was a known quantity. Uh, Episode one, Bill Daly, another alumnus of the Bob Newhart show. John Hillerman. Who would have just, I don't know, he would be two or three years before Magnum. Right, that would have been about two years, uh, two to three years before Magnum. And then Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Well, maybe not as the Beaver, but Jerry Mathers Uh was on the, the first true episode. And then second episode, George Goble of the Squares. James Gregory, Rosie Greer, that and, my, guy. and Michael Ro- Parks. Yeah, Ro- 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 Rosie Greer probably needed uh, a seatbelt extender and probably two seats. We well, probably did. He's a big guy. He was a big guy. In episode three, you had Broderick Crawford from Highway Patrol and Scatman Crothers. From, and he would have just be working on Zapped, if I'm not mistaken. And Ross Martin. 
who's somebody who did the game show circuit quite a bit back in the 70s. Episode four. Oh, again, big names. Eve Arden. Rose Marie, another square. And Jackie Mason. So you got your Borscht Belt there. Episode five, you had John Carradine. Six, Bill Bixby. And that would have been about the time of Incredible Hulk. Yes. Herm- yep. Hermione Baddeley. Who? She was on Maud. Uh, she, she was like the housekeeper on Maud. Okay. Nell Nogatuck. So, so again, that uh, she would have just gotten off of Maud because Maud was canceled in seventy or ended in seventy eight, and then Pat Carroll, who's done like everything, Jackie Coogan, oh Greg's favorite, Tom Poston. Oh my God! Do you think it took him like thirty minutes to board the plane? No, he probably fell asleep on the plane, and then once they landed, oh, oh what do you mean we landed half an hour ago? And then episode seven, you had Alejandro Ray, who was from The Flying Nun, and Bobby Van, but no sign of Elaine Joyce, interestingly enough. Mm. Episode eight, Jim Backus, Mr. Magoo. And Mr. And, Howell. And Mr. Howell. And Nancy Dusso, about, well, this would have been about a year and a half before Too Close for Comfort. Yep. What? Dave, didn't, oh. Wait, Too Close for Comfort didn't premiere until like 80? Yeah. Well, it was on for a season and a half on ABC before it made the jump to syndication. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was right. about 80 that, uh, that Too Close for Comfort started. No. 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 Okay, hold on. We're going to take a look at this. I'm looking, I'm looking at it right, right now. Too Close for Comfort aired on ABC from November 1980 to May 1983 and then first run syndication from April 7, 1984 to February 7, 1987. Okay, so that explains the special week with Too Close for Comfort on Match Game Now with Squares. Right, and, and also it said till 87, but the thing is that was known as the Ted Knight Show in syndication for that last season. Okay. And well, then Ted, it did get bold. After his death, it got folded into the Too Close for Comfort package. Right. Yeah, they, they put the Too Close for Comfort name on it. So after Jim Backus and Nancy Dusso, here's another name. Just passed away in the last couple of years. Dave Madden. Ruben Kincaid uh. on Partridge Family. And another name of somebody who just passed away very recently. Charlotte Ray. Oh, my Girls, God. Girls, girls. Charlotte White Ray, who also shows up in future induction, Thunder in Paradise. Oh, jeez. And Bobby Sherman and Lyle Wagner from The Carol Burnett Show. Yet another CBS show that had ended its run by that time. So it seems very interesting to me, at least, that all these cast-offs from CBS shows are appearing on, on, on Flying High. Episode 9. Again, more names. I mean, just this show's like crapping out guest stars. Shelly Berman, who, who Chico and I remember from the, the Game Show Congress about 14 years ago. Hilarious guy. Incredibly Sadly, hilarious. Sadly, no longer with us. Very uh, sad. Doc, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Uh, who is known for being known. Well, she's known for more stuff than that. But yeah, she's another one of those made the rounds in the 70s and 80s. Jack Carter. Jack uh, Jones. Wait, Jack Jones. The irony Jack is, jo- who sang the Love Boat theme? Jack, Jack Jones. Jack Jones. Yes. And, and then Ann Southern. She of the Ann My- Southern show. Episode 10. Kay Ballard, who just passed away within the last few months. Also sad. Charo, Coochie Coochie. Jiggle. There's your jiggle factor, exactly. Alan Hale Jr. Uh, Angus Grimsby, the Sk- skipper. Yeah, the skipper. The skipper. Uh, Red Skelton. And uh, he probably wasn't a big name back then, but he's more famous now for something else. Vince Van Patten. Yeah. Oh, uh, he, oh yeah. He he, he, host, he went on to host the uh, World Poker Tour with Mike Siston. 
Right, right. And I, I'm wondering if this is the, the poker episode of Flying High, where, <laughs> where, where, where they show the, the poker tournament on a closed caption t- or a closed circuit TV. <laughs> and, and also, uh, another guest star, Jekyll Howran, who played the Kryptonian nun in General Zod's trio in Superman 1 and 2. Episode 11. Again, more guest stars. Dodie Goodman. Well, he was on uh, he was on Punky Brewster, if I'm not mistaken. Jody Goodman would have been female. Oh, she was she was on Punky Brewster. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she was the mother. Jody Goodman was the mother in the series Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. And, and again, another show that would have probably bit the dust by about seventy seven, seventy eight. I'm sorry, I'm dead. Dodie Hartman, he was. No, Chico, she was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this, that, this that, that, show. yeah, that that died in syndication in May of '77. Uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, and then okay, here we go again. Amazing, Bernie Capel. He got off the boat and got on the plane. And then would later go on a train. So he, so he did all three types of transportation in 78, 79. Oh, my gosh. Mind blown. And, again, keeping up with the the uh, alumni of, uh, of uh, Gilligan's Island, Natalie Schaefer. Lovey Thornton. Lovey, yes. Lovey. Episode 12. Oh, Robert Goulet. Everybody knows Robert Goulet. And the other name that is recognizable to me is Arnold Stang. Yeah, because he was he was the uh, co-star with Arnold Schwarzenegger in his first movie. That wasn't even where I was going with that, but I thank you for playing. Now, Arnold Stang, you see, the way I remember Arnold Stang, he was the voice of Top Cat on the TV show Top Cat. Stop uh, laughing. I can hear you and I have feelings. Really, there's nobody of, of consequence uh, in episode 13, any, any big guest stars. 14, you had Hoyt Axton. Oh, uh, he's known for playing. Yeah, Hoyt Axton, best known for playing Billy's dad in Gremlins. Uh huh. And, and you had Bill Dana. Oh, I, like, I know who he is. He he made he made the round. He's another one who makes the rounds all over the place. But uh, yeah, Bill Dane is actually quite known for. Uh, this is how known he is. I know he plays somebody. I just don't know who it is. I know it's a character. I just don't know who it is. Uh, Bill Dana well, he, is he, uh, known yeah, for playing a... Jose Jimenez on the yeah. Ed Sullivan show. He, he, as I say, he played uh, Jose Jimenez. But also, he had his own self-named uh, TV show, self-titled. So, yeah, he was definitely a known quantity. Dick, Dick Godier. Dick Godier was on this episode. Dick Godier, who played Jaime on, on Get Smart. And he also played Robin Hood in future installment. When things when were things rotten. rotten. <laughs> yes. And Arthur Godfrey was also on this episode. So, yeah. Oh, had really. That- Oh, that son of a bitch. Yeah, so I mean, you had like four legitimate guest stars there. And then episode 15, there's John Hillerman again. And along with John Hillerman, again, the only other name that I recognize is Marvin Kaplan. And you're like, who's Marvin Kaplan? He was on Top Cat (laughs) 2! He put Juju on Top Cat. You have an almost alarming obsession with Top Cat, my friend. Okay, excuse me. I have two cats. What happened to be their names? Banoodles and... TC, yeah. And, and what do you think TC stands for? It stands for Top Cat. Top Among cat. other things, absolutely. So, yeah, so, so I may have sort of, kind of sort of encyclopedia-like knowledge on Top Cat, but I love that show. My cat's freaking named after Top Cat. So yeah, Marvin Kaplan played Choo Choo on Top Cat. Uh, episode 16, uh, you had Roddy McDowell. Oh, who was also on Super Train, Greg. Yeah, he was probably get, getting ready for that big poker game. 
he's probably flying to the uh, to the airport to get on the train for the the poker match. Absolutely. Did he have a suitcase with him? Uh, because everybody that. in that poker episode had a suitcase full of money. Well, you don't just like carry around a hundred thousand dollars in your back pocket. You do in the seventies. Yeah, and that's why you have no money in the eighties. Marianne Mobley. Marianne Mobley, yeah. She was a big name at the time. And Greg Malavy, he made the rounds in the 70s, too. And uh, actually, that episode never aired. That's one of those 300 episodes. Yeah, episode 17. Again, the big names keep coming. Marty Allen. Funny guy. Funny guy, crazy hair. Again, just passed away like in the last year or two. Very Very sad. sad. Uh, another of Greg's favorites from the first week of Match Game Hollywood Square is Barbie Benton. Roll Tide! <laughs> yeah, Roll Tide. <laughs> that is, I love obscure inside jokes, but yeah. Um, she was not a Twyla Littleton, though. No. There's nobody compares to Twyla Littleton, excuse me. Uh, Nipsey Russell was on. I bet he told the, the stewardess this is an amazing poem. Oh, I'm sure he did. Mm-hmm. And, and also Andrew Prine, who is another one of those people that maybe you don't know the name, but he's had a number of appearances over the years. His career has gone back about 50 years. He's uh, he's on one of the episodes of the Game Game, the one that GSN showed about 20 years ago. Not that you know it makes a difference if, if you could name him from that. But also he ended up playing Psycho Dad on Married with Children. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where I remember him from. Psycho Dad. Nice. Oh my gosh. And then the last episode, you had Bill Daly again. Uh, you had Heather McRae. And we mentioned uh, Greg Malavy and and uh, Meredith McRae. And uh, that uh, Heather McRae was was Meredith McRae's sister. So it's just very interesting that we mentioned Greg Malavy and 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 Meredith McRae, and here's her sister on the final episode, which never aired. So yeah, it it, it was sort of like Love Boatish, but in the air, and it had the 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 uh, the guest stars you'd see on Love Boat, but it just died. It, it, the ratings were not that good, even though it was like I said, supposedly the funniest sh- new show on TV in 1978. And actually the one takeaway I've, uh, I got from this show, not in terms of the show itself, but when it got canceled in early 79, what show replaced it? On CBS. On CBS, 10 not, PM on Friday. Not landing. Not, not landing. You're in the right area. Dallas. Dallas was originally on Sunday nights at 10 o'clock. Then it went to Saturday nights at 10 o'clock. Then back to Sunday nights at 10 o'clock. And that was the show that replaced Flying High. And Dallas was at that Friday 10 p.m. time slot till it ended. What was it? About 92, 93-ish. Yeah. Oh, I I know I'm going to hear from from some friends about this because they're big Dallas fans. But Dallas ran for like 14 seasons or 13 seasons in, in that Friday at 10, that, that was like a, a stalwart in CBS's lineup after yeah. that. Yeah, Dallas ended 91, not to landing ended in 93. So, yeah, I mean, it lasted like 12 and a half, 13 seasons after Flying High got canceled, which is, I th- I just think, pretty amazing. A very interesting uh, footnote in history that Flying High was the, the last show uh, before Dallas in that uh, Friday night time slot. But, uh, yeah, the, the, it was supposed to be a funny show. And, and like I said, it was, it was you know, some uh, some critics said it was the funniest new show of the year. But also at the same time, as we mentioned, the jiggle factor. And uh, there were critics who said, A, it's sort of demeaning against women for obvious reasons because they're, uh, well, as we said earlier, the TNA factor. Uh, but also it's trying to rip off Charlie's Angels, and it's very stereotypical. The usual stuff you'd probably hear about a show that uses females in that manner. 
Yeah. I mean, married with actually, children went through so many, so I, many issues over the years for basically the same reason. I have a list of all the Jiggle shows according to Knowledge by Consensus Wikipedia. Oh no. We have, <laughs> yes, we have the Battle of the Network Stars, of Baywatch, Charlie's Angels, The Dukes of Hazard, Fantasy Island, Hee Haw, I Dream of Jeannie, The Love Boat, Married with Children. Perhaps future installments on this podcast, Sugar Time. I have no idea what that is either. Uh, three's, <laughs> three's Company, Two and a Half Men, definite future installments on this show, We Got It Made, WKRP in Cincinnati, Wonder Woman, and Xena Warrior Princess. And those are just the most notable ones. I'm sort of, and maybe I haven't seen enough of these shows to, to to merit them being on this list, but when I think of Fantasy Island, I really don't think of the jiggle factor. No, well, they probably got on the list because Barbie Benton was on more than a couple episodes. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, and, well, Dukes of Hazard, well, yeah, I mean, Daisy Duke, but beyond that, there really wasn't much of a jiggle factor unless, uh, unless uh, Boss Hog was doing something, but I'm not going to get into that. Oh! Well, I'm uh, just being honest. And yeah, Wonder Woman definitely fits in that. WKRP, I mean, there's one reason WKRP would be on the list. Surprise, surprise. Lonnie Anderson, obviously. 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 Uh, but I mean, the rest of them make sense. Uh, Sugar Time, just very briefly, oh, 11 episodes... Uh, plus two unaired episodes. ABC, 1977 to 78. I'm adding it to the list right now. And, oh, wait, 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 wait. What did we say, or who did we say was the big factor in Fantasy Island being on the list? Barbie Benton. She was on Sugar Time. Oh, yeah, that's definitely going on the list right now. And actually, Sugar Time was produced by James Comack, who would have been behind... Welcome back, Cotter. Mm-hmm. Welcome back, indeed. Oh, gosh. I, I, I'm a sugar time. With an exclamation point. No, oh, that's my. the... No, yeah, that's... That well, that's the, the title. I get that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, is there a... Well, let's just say... A lot of the people on this show, well, actually, two of the people on this show, would it wouldn't be the end of their career for doing Flying High, because you have Connie Solica, who would also be on future installments beyond Westworld, and of course, she would end up being on The Greatest American Hero. Uh, Pat Klaus took and the... Hotel. Uh, and Hotel, that's right. Uh, Pat Klaus was the uh, Lauren Tweez of the final season of The Love Boat. Coincidentally, The Love Boat. Yes, yeah, she, she went from the the uh, plane to the boat. Yeah, whereas, whereas Roddy McDowell went from the train to the plane. And, and of course, Bernie Coppell took all three. <laughs> because, because he can. He's a world uh, traveler, that's why. As for Edward Platt, well... Well, he's living off of those uh, those hoppy residuals from Sanford and Son. Uh, and uh, Catherine and, Witt, who the hell knows what happened to her? And, and actually, I, I'm going to add about Howard Platt really uh, quickly. Uh, it must have been about three years ago or so, three or four years ago, there was a car company, uh, like one of those customizable dealerships uh sort of like uh counts cars uh in las vegas for counting cars and and and, uh pawn stars they do customizations like that they actually bought the original sanford and son truck and they actually had a couple sanford and son not necessarily stars but actors come for like the, the big reveal of the truck one of them was uh, the, the person who played Rollo, who has since passed away. But they also had Hoppy there. They had Howard Platt, and I forget who the other person was. It wasn't uh, uh, it wasn't um, De- Demond Wilson. 
But yeah, they had three people from Sanford's son there. And if I knew about this, I could have gone to see Hoppy slash the, the pilot of, of Flying High back three, four years ago. Oh. Well, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there's not much of Flying High, but you can sort of see that they're going the same route as Super Train and The Love Boat, albeit more in a, a, a sitcom comedy type of sense. And, yeah, it's it, it's easy to say that. Chico, take it from me. Yeah, fly, Flying High, sexy stewardess and, an, and a horny pilot. It may be incredibly tasteless now, but back in 1978 and 1979, it was a thing on TV. And it was on Friday nights before Dallas. So that's memorable in and of itself. All right. Well, I think we're going to put the uh, bow on this one next week. And we're I'm not going to tell you what's happening next week, but A, it's going to have to do with the holidays which are coming up, the first episode at least. And B, I think this came about because Greg actually saw an ad for Flying High during what we're going to cover next week. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And also this episode is very timely because of a certain event in pop culture that is happening next week. So this along with Christmas and along with the theme of this particular subject no 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 chico knows not that yes Yes, you can if if you if you're Uh, smart enough to figure out what's coming uh this coming week you'll know what the next subject is here's a hint it's not on disney plus (laughs) that's a hint I'll, i'll give you that uh and then the second episode next week Oh, my gosh. Greg, I think, has been anticipating this episode for about, like, two and a half months. Oh, God, yes. Oh, Since this we... is going to be... We may have more fun than you, the listener, but, oh, my gosh. My, I can vouch for myself and Greg, and I'm sure Chico, too. Yes. We have seen too many episodes of this show since about October, and I think each of us has, like, scrupulously criticized like... every episode this of this be... show. This is going to be the new Christmas tradition. (laughs) Uh, At least for this year. But, oh my gosh, the second episode next week, you may want to charge up your phone because we may be going really long in this one. We may kill your battery on your phone or your your iPad because the second episode next week, which I think what we're going to do, we're going to release on a Christmas day. That's our Christmas present to you folks. Christmas Day, we're going to release this episode, and you can listen to it on your new phones and your new iPads and new tablets and new speakers. We will christen those products for you. Yes, because everyone – and you'll be like, why are you, why are they covering of all things this? But no, you need to know all about this subject. Yes, This is do. a show that needs to be covered. Yes, it, it is. It needs to be covered. Oh, next week is going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing, and we hope you're here to to join us for that. Well, don't forget you can find us everywhere on itwasathingontv.com. That'll link you to all the social media. That'll link you to our email. That'll link you to past episodes. And please you know, like us on social media, as Chico would say. And Tell your friends. Say, no, well, not just that. Like and subscribe. Like but and also, subscribe. But also, tell your friends. Tell your mom. Tell your friend's mom. And, and, and tell your mom's friends. But yeah, next week, oh, there are going to be some amazing episodes. I can't wait for it. I'm sure Chico and Greg can't. As always, thank you for listening. We'll be here next week with two amazing episodes. Thank you again for your patronage. Enjoy the rest of your week. Good night. Top cat.
Everybody loves him, Top Cat. Driving in the outside of a car, Top Cat. Yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. I'm that isn't to your... even the theme song. <laughs> what are you doing, you fraud? <laughs> top yeah, so... Cat. He's a Top Cat. <laughs> Oh but God. but yeah, go go on, go on, go on. Okay, now that you guys have given me the end of the show. No, it's Top Cat, do 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 do, the most effectual Top Cat, do 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 do, whose intellectual close friends get to call him TC, provided it's with dignity. Top Cat, the inspirational leader of the gang. Who's the top? Who's the VIP? Who's the championship? Who's the most tip top? Doodle doo top cat. Right, and he's driving on the outside of a car. <laughs> I like your version better. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's driving on the outside of a car. <laughs> oh.